so can you just tell me first a little bit about you, how long you've been studying uh, permafrost specifically? I graduated from Moscow University in uh, uh, 1973. 1973. And by that time I already was twice in field in permafrost area. My background is permafrost. Had you done a lot of work in that Yamal Peninsula area? Since uh, 1987. Are conditions there warming generally? It depends what you are talking about. Uh, climate, air temperature is one thing and permafrost is the other thing. So, with the uh, air temperature, for if you take uh, uh, trends for, for 40 years, for example, then yes, there is some warming about one degree in average. As to permafrost, uh, yes, in general, about one degree warming as well. When did you first hear that there was something strange happening? Uh, last Friday. Somebody called the institute asking whether there was a permafrost expert who can help uh, with understanding what is going on. I didn't hear what was going on, I was very busy with my own studies. The authorities called, called me and said whether I can stop doing whatever I do, take my own things and go and go in fields to see this the hole. Of course I was quite happy to throw away what I was doing. So what was your initial reaction? Uh, when I looked at the photographs, um, it was a little different. I thought of course, I thought it was something connected, with, uh, connected uh, to human impact, to drilling, to gas production, so on. When uh, we arrived, uh, the first thing I'm looking for is whether there is anything in connection with human activities, but there was nothing. I was disappointed. It was so <laughs> easy to say that there were people who drilled their hole and made this. Uh, I and how far away is it from the gas activities there? Uh, somebody say 30 kilometers, somebody say 40 kilometers. I don't know myself. Uh, simply have no time to look even at the metals. One of the and other um, early discussions was about whether there was a signs of an explosion, meaning actual combustion, you know, sort of fire or smoke or black. No, this is of. Uh, of real explosion or uh, maybe meteorite or, or for somebody asked me maybe maybe we can say there was a UFO no no traces of um, of any heat I would say. so what the permafrost is flowing but that's because of the sun of bomb air Right. Uh, so, what did you see? Uh, there obviously was. Was there a pressure release of some kind? Was it? Uh, that was the other question. Whether it had kind of like a cork popping or. Um, um, yes, cork have... popping was the first thing that comes to mind when you see. Uh, I still don't know the English name for that. We call it brustva. Brustva. Yes. Something that uh, uh, is blown out and then settles somewhere else. So there is such a, a rim around this, around the hole, about four meters high in some places, even maybe more. So then getting to the question of the natural uh, processes that take place in, in that area, uh, do you have in your mind when you look at what, what happened a very clear picture of what probably led to this? 10,000 years ago. Uh, there was what we call uh, Holocene Eternal Optimum. It was time when it was much warmer than now. At that time, some permafrost was going, and we know the traces, not that far north. In this area, it wasn't going to the maybe more than two, two meters. And the uh, uh, thickness of permafrost is three to five hundred meters. So it was only the very top was touched, even when it was warmer than now. Uh, there are lots of lakes on the mouth. Some of them are very roundish and, with, and very deep in the middle. Deeper than you would expect. 
expect in other regions, in other communities. So now they, it looks like those lakes uh, 10,000 years ago were more or less uh, thanks to the same process. So this, this is how I connect what we see now with some ancient times. So what would be the force that would propel the uh, top to kind of blast outward? Uh, how, does that, how would that work? Yeah. The idea is, uh, and uh, I already got advice from people who study the same, there are the same features in the uh, sea floor in, uh, in So they study the same, uh, I guess, uh, manifestations. Uh, and with the physical methods, not that they can see themselves, but with the physical methods, uh, they get the same shapes, like something round, or sometimes something uh, in the mythology, with this, uh, yes, I think they call it something like pop-up. Pop-up. Say that again? Pop-up. Oh, pop-up, yeah, yeah, okay. Something like that, maybe I, I do not remember it correctly. No, that sounds plausible. <laughs> uh, so they say that uh, my idea is very close to what they consider it should be. And the idea is that there is, there is natural gas always in, in, in all the West Siberian deposits in the mountain. And we feel the smell of and do not have smell, but we measure the pain with the hull. But uh, hydrosulfate, I think, right. which smells very bad. <laughs> so this smell is, is there, we can feel it. So there was gas to the to whatever depth, maybe to the depth of normal gas deposits, which are production limits. But this is not in the production limit, this is upper 100 meters. There is gas in the pores. When uh, everything is frozen, the gas is, is enclosed in the ice. When ice starts to thaw inside the, the deposit, the gas starts to be released. It is somewhere in between the ice, the mineral particles, and water drops. Three phases uh, of the matter. Yeah. Phases. So the, the um, proportion of these phases may bring to, uh, to the situation when gas is, uh, there is too much gas and it takes more, more space than water. And, uh, uh, so the pressure somehow of this uh, gas is due to this little melting, not full melting. Right. If there is full melting, then all the gas is somehow diffused in the material. The idea is that there is still permafrost, which is a uh, Right. which do not allow gas diffusion everywhere, all in some direction. You know, I forgot to ask you uh, one of the most important questions. I, I saw some uh, estimates that it was a year or two old. Is, is there a way to get in a sense of how, how long ago this took place? Well, this for sure it was not this year's event, because there are new fresh leaves on the shrubs which are not covered by the mud. But the mud covers uh, the branches of the shirts. So this, not this spring, but uh, not it is not very old because uh, the hole which uh, is said to be older, I don't know, because no one found the, the source. Just that, as you know, it appears in YouTube, when was it taken? Right. So, but uh, uh, you can see water relatively close to the surface in the other hole. This hole, what is very, very deep, we managed to see only when we put a small camera on the rope inside, inside this. Uh, yeah, that was, a pretty, that was a pretty interesting image when the camera was kind of uh, whirling as it was going down. Yes. Um, uh, see that there is water, but still somewhere deep in the bottom. Interesting. Well, one, one other specific question. How thick is the permafrost in that area? Do you know? Three to five hundred meters, uh, I would say, before we start measuring. Yeah. But it's the regular uh, thickness, which is known from deep wells. Wow. Actually, wells. That's what is measured. 
I wanted to ask you about the word pingo. This was the first time I ever stumbled on the word pingo. Now, is that formation different than what you see here? Uh, I guess somebody says it should be pingo, but pingo can can burst, but uh, uh, when it is cooling, pingo is formed by water injection into permafrost. For some reason, there is water and there is permafrost. So water is injected, it rises, uh, rises the surface, and you get such a hill uh, inside of which you have ice, and sometimes you have also water, still water, which do not freeze because of the pressure. Then, if there is another freezing episode, then this water will get all this pressure. Oh, and it expands. And expand and blow up. Uh, I see. So, so pingos, so pingos uh, burst when they get cold. So maybe you have to come up with a new name for this this kind of formation. So I'm looking for the new name. I even, uh, people are already sending me uh, the suggestions. One is, um, as I said somewhere, that it looks like a barrel because uh, it is more, more narrow at the top, at the bottom, and a little bit wide in the middle, so more like a barrel. So people are sending me this... Uh, Latin for barrel, I don't remember. Gas dolium. Gas, gas do, dolium is a uh, barrel. Some of the uh, mythologies that had spread were that the, there was a methane explosion or that this, this could indicate that there was a chance for abrupt uh, methane release. It kind of, people were positing that what they saw there uh, is another indication that permafrost could uh, release large amounts of methane in a warming climate. And I don't know, it sounds like you're saying that this is a different scale of event entirely? Or? It can release lots of methane, not, not only methane, but uh, you should understand that this is a 30 meters wide, even through thermocast, which is process of uh, ice melting and filling in this place as a lake. Yes? So there will be a lake of 30, 50, 100 meters deep. And that's it. So the rest is still permafrost. People would never agree that all permafrost will thaw because it is impossible. There are lots of ways that this feature can protect itself. When it becomes warmer, then you have uh, overgrowing of vegetation, uh, thicker vegetation which protects permafrost from warming. And with the warmth, you get uh, less. Uh, get less precipitation in time. We get less precipitation, and with this, uh, less snow and less snow, less uh, protection of permafrost from winter cooling. Oh, that's interesting. So um, it gets more so cooling in the winter. Yeah. So they're negative. That's like a negative feedback, in a way. That, uh, yes, there are. Uh, positive, negative, whatever feedbacks, and you have to calculate all of them, to take into account all of them. You can't just say, uh, in 20 years it will be 2 degrees warmer, so come for so thawing. It will be maybe 2 degrees warmer, but, but not, not thawing, uh, at least in the far north. In the south, where you have only patches of permafrost, right. the responses may be a little bit more active, but what we see now, there was permafrost with minus one degree temperature. Now, after all, after climate warming of one and a half degree, the frost temperature is point, minus point 0.1 degree, but not zero, not above zero. Right, right, right. One of the good things about this is it brought a lot of attention to an area of the world that people don't think about very much. So that's been, are you going back? How soon are you going back? <laughs> <laughs> Only if, uh, yeah. Helicopter one time to go there and back, helicopter, for one day. Yeah. But if you go for two days, then you pay twice, for example. Ah, uh, right. So I think it will be more than $10,000. Wow, okay. 10, dollars only to get there. Well, maybe uh, maybe the BBC can <laughs> hire a helicopter. That will be good of BBC. Yeah. We'll be happy and lucky to take them if they have money for helicopters. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm really happy that you made the time to... Um, talk with me. So thank you very much.